Professor Gunnar Heinsson gaf een lezing in het Goethe-Instituut in Amsterdam over zijn boek Zonen grijpen de wereldmacht, dat onlangs naar het Nederlands vertaald is. Hierin stelt de Duitse genocideonderzoeker dat er maar één drijfveer is voor conflictsituaties en oorlogen. De geboorte van te veel jongens. And now if you look at the situation here, you can see that in Afghanistan every year 500.000 boys reach fighting, fighting age, turn 15. Every year 500.000. 350.000 of them second, third, fourth brothers. Who nobody needs at home. They love them at home. Out of these 500,000 boys, maybe 150,000 will find a position in the opium fields or in the army, the new army, or in the police forces. But only as long as Germany and the Netherlands continue to pay for their army. We pay them. This still leaves us 350,000 young Afghanis every year who do not have that option. And if only one in ten takes to arms, NATO, which has 35,000 men in Afghanistan, will face a new, fresh Afghani force of 35,000 soldiers if only one out of ten Afghanis take to arms. Imagine what happens if five, five out of ten take to arms. And the young Afghanis who are ready to fight and to die they are brother number three or brother number four. But the Western soldier from the Netherlands or from Germany who is dying there, he is probably his family's not only son, but the only child. When he dies, his family is demographically wiped out. The moment he was moved out. To make the situation really dangerous, uh, you need an increase in per capita income. So if such a situation of, of massive reproduction uh, takes place in an impoverished country where there is no food, the superfluous children will die. This was the classical uh, method of India, mind you. We had relatively little uh, turmoil in India, but we had enormously high rates of, 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 of children dying of hunger. So you need the combination of superfluous boys who are additionally well educated and well fed so that they can think about how to change their world, how to change their fight, and that they are strong enough to fight for the change. See, this is monocausal. The book, if you read it, it explains the main factors. Another important area uh, with similar uh, population dynamics is the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Here we have a peculiar reason. Uh, and the reason is that the Western nations pay for every newborn baby as a refugee. Say, so if you have one child, if you have ten children, we pay for them. So they grow up, and after they have turned 15, they're well-fed, they're well-educated, and they have no chance. And they either kill each other, or they try to kill the Jews on the other side of the border. So basically you're saying that uh, one of the solutions to, for example, the Gaza problem would be to basically stop all development aid? Uh, what I had proposed that when the, when the peace negotiation started in 1991, uh, two things should have done in 1991. The Israelis, no more settlements. And to the Palestinians, I would have said, every child that is born up to now, because we offered you the money, we will care for. This ch child we will pay for until it's 15. But every child from 1st of January 1992, you have to pay for, like an Algerian woman has to pay for a child, like a Lebanese woman has to pay for a child. Then, now we are 16 years later. What would we see? We should, would see Gazan boys coming of age as the only sons of their families, with very little incentive to turn to violence. Now, three or four boys come of age at the age of 15, and the violence will continue. So I would not say just stop the aid, but you fade them out, you say, you are there, we pay for you, and we tell uh, the, the adults, the children of tomorrow, you pay for, as everybody else in the world.